Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers are among the most powerful and complex warships ever built. Designed to operate as mobile air bases at sea, these colossal vessels can carry over 100 aircraft and support more than 5,000 personnel. Packed with advanced systems, from radar and catapults to nuclear propulsion and flight deck automation, the sheer scale of their operations results in a staggering daily operational cost, ranging from $6 million to $8 million. Today's Nimitz-class carriers represent the pinnacle of this evolution. Serving as the backbone of U.S. naval power projection, they enable rapid response to global crises and remain critical to maintaining maritime superiority in the 21st century. These nuclear-powered giants measure over 1,000 feet in length, displace more than 100,000 tons, and carry a construction cost that exceeds $10 billion per ship. It's difficult to grasp the true scale of an aircraft carrier until you see one up close. These floating fortresses are among the largest vessels on the planet. Due to their immense length and displacement, aircraft carriers are not designed for tight maneuvers, especially at low speeds. Like all large ships, they require ample space and assistance when navigating confined or shallow waters. When approaching ports, harbors, or docking facilities, aircraft carriers rely on powerful tugboats to guide them safely into position. These smaller but exceptionally strong vessels push, pull, and steer the carrier with precision, compensating for the carrier's limited maneuverability in restricted waters. Tugboats play a critical role in preventing damage to both the carrier and nearby infrastructure during docking operations. However, the situation is quite different when the carrier is operating in open waters. Out at sea, with no tight confines or shallow depths to worry about, the carrier navigates independently, making wide, sweeping turns as needed. Thanks to its onboard propulsion and navigation systems, the ship can operate with impressive autonomy, especially when cruising at higher speeds in the vastness of the ocean. For an enemy submarine or warship attempting to track a carrier on the move, this level of speed and unpredictability presents a major challenge. When combined with the carrier's advanced electronic warfare systems designed to scramble radar, jam communications, and obscure its location, the result is a highly elusive and formidable adversary in any maritime conflict. Aircraft carriers often remain at sea for extended periods, sometimes several months at a time. With as many as 5,000 personnel aboard, these massive vessels require regular resupply of essentials, including food, equipment, 
and most critically, fuel. To maintain operations without returning to port, the Navy employs a method called underway replenishment. A connecting line is first passed between the two ships, establishing a secure link. This line is then used to guide a long fuel hose across the gap. Once connected to the carrier's fuel system, the hose allows fuel to be pumped directly from the Grumman, all while both ships remain in motion. The reason why it's unsafe is because there's so many different things that could go wrong, all the way from uh, the blocks and the rigging not being rigged right, all the way up until the delivery ship not having the proper equipment to send over. Even little notches that are in the probe receiver or the actual probe that are coming over can cause difficulties with the rig and, and actually make it almost impossible to do unrep. This precise and coordinated process is vital for keeping carriers mission ready during prolonged deployments. While aircraft carriers demonstrate the sheer scale and logistical precision of naval operations at sea, the story of military innovation doesn't end on the ocean's surface. In the skies, and even at the edge of space, the pursuit of speed and technological advancement has pushed boundaries in equally astonishing ways. Imagine a time when breaking the sound barrier was deemed impossible. But in 1947, everything changed. The Air Force unleashed the experimental Bell X-1 aircraft, shattering the barrier and ushering in a new era of flight. Fast forward to the 1960s, when the X-15 rocket-powered beast dominated the skies, setting unbeaten records for speed and altitude. It even influenced the technology behind iconic missions like Project Mercury, Apollo, and the Space Shuttle. Throughout its decade-long program, the X-15 set unmatched records in both speed and altitude, serving as a vital testbed for high-speed, high-altitude flight. In this scene from 1963, we see the X-15 making a controlled approach toward Edwards Air Force Base, gliding in for landing on the vast expanse of Rogers Dry Lake. As it descends, watch as the auxiliary propellant tanks and the lower ventral fin are jettisoned. Clear indicators of the aircraft's sophisticated aerodynamic and propulsion systems. Launched from a modified B-52 bomber at high altitude, the X-15 was powered by a rocket engine capable of propelling it to the edge of space. After its brief high-velocity flight, the aircraft would transition into an unpowered glide, returning to Earth for pinpoint landings on dry lake beds. The X-15's remarkable performance, reaching speeds of over Mach 6 and altitudes above 50 miles, pushed the boundaries of flight and opened entirely new frontiers in aerospace exploration. Testing centers are critical for the research and development of future aviation technology. The Holloman Test Track is located at Holloman Air Force Base in the United States and serves as the ideal testbed for conducting egress system tests. Mm -hmm. 
This test track has three different rail tracks. Two of them run the entire length of 50,971 feet, while a shorter tertiary track is only 15,201 feet long. Usually, the test vehicle, which is the sled, is accelerated along the track with the help of solid rocket motors. Whenever there's, there's a big change, if you're uh, adding weight to a helmet, for instance, if you're changing your flight gear, uh, if you need to change the sequencer, or if you need to change componentry on the seat, uh, we, we need to check that out before it's gonna be fielded out in the fleet. Uh, so that's, that's a large part of our job here uh, and drives uh, our egress mission. So our impact to the Air Force is, is directly supporting a warfighter. And that is what we're after is to make sure if they have to pull that handle uh, in, in a uh, egress event, that no kidding, they're gonna be as safe as possible. That's what we're here to do is to collect that data, verify that, that everything has been accounted for and that the seed is designed in such a way to maximize survivability. Out of all the tests conducted, testing ejection seats has been the most challenging. While the tests were conducted with humans, they proved to be ineffective and the risks were off the charts. As a result, high-tech mannequins stuffed with sensors were used. We're trying to simulate the head accelerations, the neck loads, the spinal loads um, that occur during that high-speed ejection and determining if the ejection seats that we're interested in will be within safe limits that the Air Force has established over the years. They were made to replicate a human pilot in every aspect. They are placed inside the cockpit, strapped to the seat like a human pilot. These mannequins, serving as anthropometric test devices, are utilized for extensive data acquisition beyond the capabilities of their human counterparts. The data collected from the embedded sensors remains the basis for alterations made to the ejection seats. In addition to the egress testing, the track is used for hypersonic missile testing as well. Things get complicated with hypersonic tests as the sled should reach hypersonic speeds, surpassing Mach 5. Typically, the test article is recovered after the test. This allows engineers to conduct post-test examinations and collect vital information. There are ground-fixed optical cameras to catch the action along the test track. Fire. From the towering presence of aircraft carriers patrolling the oceans to the record-breaking speed of rocket planes and the cutting-edge developments in hypersonic testing, Today's military and aerospace technologies are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. These innovations not only demonstrate the incredible engineering and coordination behind modern defense systems, but also highlight the relentless pursuit of speed, precision, and survivability on land, at sea, and in the skies. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.